What's up guys, I'm Roderick, aka Rodman, and welcome back to another video. In the last video, we talked about the absolute worst bosses in the Dark Souls franchise or the Souls franchise. But in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the best boss from each and every Souls game. Of course, this is just my personal opinion, but I do think I hit the nail on the head with a lot of these games. So if you like retro video game, gaming, and anime content, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more content just like this. So let's get right into the video. So for the best boss in Demon Souls, I am still gonna go with Old King Alant. I think this guy is super dope. And I, me personally, I love the humanoid fights in all of the Souls games. And if you don't know, all the bosses in Demon Souls they're almost like Zelda bosses where they're very gimmicky. And you pretty much have to find the gimmick to the boss fight and exploit it to win. But Old King Alant is your rare example in Demon's Souls of a classic Souls boss where you have to know attack patterns, you have to bob and weave and actually care about iframes and things like that. Um, Old King Alant also has a really cool, not cool, but he has a move where if he grabs you, he literally de-levels you, which can be a threat. I think that's really cool. And he's actually the only monster or boss in the Soul series that does something like that, which I think is really dope. Uh, also, he's really um, invulnerable to magic. So if you try to cheese the game with the magic build, that's not really going to work. You gotta get in there and start boxing melee style, which I really love because that's my play style. But that's who I believe who the best boss in Demon Souls is. It's Old King Alon. And the lore behind him is actually really cool. Uh, so let's move on to Dark Souls 1. So for the best boss in Dark Souls 1, I believe it's easily the final boss of the game. Gwen, Lord of Cinder. I believe what made this boss so dope is the insane buildup that it had for the whole game. Pretty much the whole game, you know that this is the guy that you're going to have to take down. It's just a matter of time. Um, this guy is really dope. And I believe the boss fight, the boss fight is hard as well. Even though me personally, I beat this guy on the first try, but... Compared to a lot of other bosses in Dark Souls 1, this guy is a, a challenge. He hits really hard. He has grab moves, which a lot of bosses in Dark Souls 1 don't have. Um, and the lore behind Gwen is insane. Like, this guy, he is him. He is absolutely him. Uh, but I'm not going to go too crazy about Gwen. Everybody knows this guy is an amazing boss. And I believe he really does take the cake for best boss in Dark Souls 1. I was going to put, even though they gave me a really, really hard time, I was going to put Ornstein and Smo because they're just iconic. They're probably the most popular or the most famous boss in Dar um, Souls history. And it's a great boss fight. The pillars, like this, the, the mechanics behind the boss fight is great. Even though it made me almost quit the game. But... Let's go ahead and move on to Dark Souls 2. So for the best boss in Dark Souls 2, I am going to have to put the Fume Knight. Me personally, because I'm a strength character, I always go with full strength build. And this guy is the owner of Fugs, uh, the Fume Ultra Great Sword. And this guy is just super dope. Like, he has some of everything. He's super strong. He's dual wielding two ultra great swords, which I think is super dope. And then on top of that, once you get to his second phase, he starts to use magic and whatnot too, mixed in with, you know, him hitting like a truck. Um, this boss fight was a bit frustrating though, because as you guys know, hitboxes and iframes in Dark Souls 2 work a bit different than they do from the rest of the series and it can be really really frustrating when you think you dodge one of his attacks and you 
you don't dodge it now you know you get one shot and there's an attack in the second phase pretty much where he like lights fugs on fire and he does like a horizontal slash and it looks super easily dodgeable but it's really hard to dodge and he's super slow which makes you think that this guy is going to be easy but trust me he's not he has one of the highest health pools in the entire game uh and he's really tanky as well he almost reminds me of a slave knight gale when it comes to tankiness but that's what i think the best boss in dark souls 2 is so let's move on to dark souls 3. so for the absolute best boss in dark souls 3 and trust me guys this was a really really hard choice because that's what dark souls 3 is known for is i think dark souls 3 probably has the best boss lineup in the entire series guys tell me what you guys think about that in the comments but i believe that the nameless king slash king of the storm is the best boss in dark souls 3 why is because the pure intensity that it brings it is a three phase boss fight and if you guys don't know usually in the souls the most a boss fight is going to be is going to be two phases but the nameless king is super dope even when it comes down to the name the nameless king he fights you on a freaking dragon this guy is super dope then he hops off the dragon he has lightning attacks he's hitting really hard and you gotta come with it you gotta come with it uh this guy is optional though which makes it all the more doper i feel like because in souls most of the optional bosses or dlc bosses are some of the best in the entire series and nameless king is no different this guy is an absolute monster mm, with the crit right there so satisfying uh it's really frustrating to die to this guy though especially when you get to the third phase and you die now you gotta start over but that is my take on who the best boston dark souls 3 is i was going to say slave knight gale i believe that he's really dope as well uh the twin princes are really cool uh, the soul of cinder is is really dope i'm not really going to talk about that because i don't want to go into spoiler territory or anything but i believe that the nameless king is the best boss in dark souls 3 so let's move on to bloodborne so i think this is a no-brainer um garamon is the best boss in bloodborne especially when it comes down to lore um pretty much the aspect of this fight is He's trying to kill you to uh, bring you out of the Hunter's Dream. But if you kill him, he also gets released from the Hunter's Dream. So it's pretty much almost like a battle of friends trying to free each other from the torment, which is the Hunter's Dream. It's really crazy. And on top of that, the soundtrack is insanely beautiful. And just, just the emotion that it makes you feel is kind of like, man, I'm fighting my homie like to the death. And on top of that, this is a hard fight. This is one of the hardest fights in Bloodborne. Uh, it's a two-phase fight, and when he gets to the second phase, he's super fast, he hits like a truck, and on top of that, he can hit you with viscerals, just like you've been doing to all the beasts in the game. He can hit you with crits too. He can parry you as well. So you gotta be careful with spamming attacks and whatnot, but you can also parry him as well. Uh, this boss is just... It's just wonderful. It, ah, man, I wish I can go back and experience it for the first time. Um, it's just a, a, a wonderful experience. He's super fast. He hits really hard. And on top of the fact, he's the first hunter ever. Uh, man, Garamond is just such a beast. And especially playing the game for the first time. And you think this guy, boom, visceral, boom. So you gotta watch out for that but you think that he's just wheelchair ridden the entire time and then all of a sudden he stands up and brings his big scythe out and you're like oh crap 
stuff just got real. It's insane. But that's who I think the best boss in Bloodborne is. A close second would be Lady Maria. And then third, I would definitely put Orphan of Kos. But moving on to Sekiro. So for the best boss in Sekiro, it is definitely Ishing the Sword Saint. I have almost quit the game because of this guy. I believe that he's probably the hardest fight in Sekiro. And everybody knows Sekiro is a really hard game compared to the rest of the Souls games because of this, uh, you know, sort of give and take combat system. You know, coming from all the other Souls games, everybody's used to, you know, just dodging and whatnot. But you don't do that in Sekiro. But Ishina Sword Saint, I think, is a perfect final battle especially knowing that you was cool with him the entire entire game pretty much like that that was your homeboy um i also think it's weird that you fight genichiro right before him and then ishin like crawls out of genichiro's body i did think that was a bit weird but ishin literally has some of everything he has a sword he has like a, a spear and then he literally brings out a Glock 40 and is shooting at you in ancient Japan. It's insane. And on top of that, guess what? He can use that lightning attack that Genichiro spams in both of the fights that you have with him. Uh, this fight is just incredible. It is an incredible way to end the game. I would not want to do it any other way. If you didn't know, there are multiple ways that you can end the game and you don't even have to fight this guy but i recommend everybody do the ending where you fight ishing the sword saying it's just a beautiful fight one of the best fights in the entire soul series so finally let's move on to elden ring so guys this right here probably was the absolute hardest decision i had to make the entire video it's who is the best boss in the Elden Ring. And my conclusion is the final boss, Sis of Elden Ring, specifically Elden Beast. Um, and what made these bosses so good to me is the sort of build up and the, 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 the lore of Elden Ring. You're like a nobody, you're a tarnish, you're a loser. But then again, here you are about to get the Elden Ring and become um, the Elden Lord, fighting the Elden Beast. I think it's really dope. And what really does it for this boss fight to me, I believe it has the best OST out of any boss in the game. I know Melania's OST is very good. Look, he just tried to resing on you. But... I believe that Melania's OST is very, very good, but at the same time, when you walk into that boss room and you hear the, the Elden Ring theme, ah, oh, dude, it's, it, it, it's, it's tear jerking almost. It's kind of like I'm here, I did it. Like this is the final boss, and on top of that, this is my first Souls game, and man, it it was quite the journey. And I was really sad once I beat the game. I was like, wow, like I'm done with Elden Ring. Elden Ring definitely made its way into like my top five favorite video games of all time. Uh, but yes, I believe that the Elden Beast is the best boss in uh, Elden Ring, even though he can be annoying. He runs away and stuff like that. But just when it comes down to lore and just what you've been through just to even get here, like, this guy definitely takes the cake. This is a, a beautiful boss fight. Malekith, or Malekith was a very close second though. He probably was the most happy when I beat a boss. Uh, Melania was very close, and actually Godfrey was very close to me as well. But that's gonna do it for this video, man. If there's anybody that I overlooked, or there's a boss that you truly loved and I didn't mention him at all, let me know down in the comment section below. I want to, you know, interact with you guys more and whatnot. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, man. If you like retro video gaming, 
gaming, gameplay, and anime, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more content just like this. Rob Man, out. Peace.